Madam, in the, our Singapore conversation, many Singaporeans have expressed a wish for a more fulfilling pace of life. Madam, I wish we could have a more fulfilling pace of debate, but uh, the fact remains that uh, our members have raised many weighty issues. I do have quite a lot to get through in the remaining time, so I hope members will bear with me while I raise the tempo uh, of the speech. Um, now, also from the Our Singapore conversation, we hear Singaporeans' aspirations for a society with strong values and a kampong spirit. I agree with Mr. Bayam King that our national schools are key institutions that help to build national identity and strengthen social cohesion. Many of us are proud of the schools that we come from, and rightly so. Owing to demographic changes, from time to time we merge or relocate some schools so that school places are geographically distributed and to better meet the community's needs. We do not make these decisions lightly. In merging or relocating schools, we are mindful of the importance of preserving their heritage. Where possible, for example, where it is not geographically confusing, the name of the relocated school will be preserved to maintain the link with its past heritage. Schools are also encouraged to preserve various aspects of their heritage. We hope that Singaporeans will similarly see these merged or relocated schools as their alma mater and to continue to support them. Madam Minister Heng talked about how every Singaporean child is precious, and I will be speaking about students with special education needs today. Education is a powerful tool for us to equip these students with the skills and values to thrive as integral members of society. To achieve this, we take a differentiated approach, customised to best meet the needs of the child. Currently, students with mild special needs are educated in mainstream schools with appropriate learning support. For students with moderate to severe needs, they are served in the 20 SPED schools, which are established by VWOs, but operated with extensive support from the government. Each of these schools cater to the disability profile of their students and is organized to help students with specific special learning needs learn effectively. I will elaborate further on how we have been customizing our policies to meet their needs and also the other kinds of support that we provide. Mr. Lim Biao Chuan asked whether more financial support can be given to SPED schools. Mr. Ang Wei Neng also asked for us to extend good mainstream school policies to the SPED schools. Madam, in recognition of the needs of SPED students as a baseline, MOE provides generous funding to the SPED schools so that they can run customized programs. The funding provided for SPED students is substantially more than funding provided for a student in a mainstream school. The funds are used to run the SPED schools, pay for staff salaries, support professional development, and provide administrative and curricular support. In principle, any additional support given to mainstream students will be customized and adapted for SPED students. Some recent examples of additional financial support extended to SPED students are the Financial Assistance Scheme, or FAS, for Singapore citizens from lower-income families, the School Breakfast Program for all SPED FAS students aged 7 to 12, similar to the program in primary schools, and enhancements to the Opportunity Fund for schools in FY 2013, where more funding will be provided to SPED schools with more needy students. MOE will also continue giving financial support to expand the physical capacity of the SPED sector. To meet the learning needs of SPED students, we customise the infrastructure provisions, uh, for, in for instance, special facilities like sensory integration rooms. We also review these needs regularly. Over the past decade, we have committed $150 million towards the upgrading and building of the 20 SPED schools. From 2013, Meta School will be able to take in another 150 students with the completion of its new extension block. We want to assure members today that no child with special needs will be deprived of a quality education because he or she cannot afford it. There are two key pillars in a good education, quality curriculum and quality teachers. The SPED curriculum framework was developed together with our stakeholders. It sets a unifying direction for excellence in teaching and learning. We are working towards high standards and strong outcomes outcomes to prepare the students for a fulfilling future. For schools to effectively implement the curriculum framework, we need customized curricula to meet the needs of children in different disability groups. MOE specialists support schools in the customization effort through workshops and school visits. This is time consuming, but well worth the effort. At the SPED conference last year, I announced the addition of two domains to the SPED curriculum framework, character and citizenship education as a foundation for value-based values -based special education and Information and Communications Technology, or ICT, as an enabler for teaching and learning. Mr. Ang Wei has talked about more ICT support for SPED schools. Technology is an enabler that unlocks the potential of each child, especially those who have difficulty communicating or learning using conventional methods. Hence, together with the tote board, MOE has introduced an ICT funding model for SPED, totaling $4.5 million over the next three years.
Teachers, too, are essential for quality education, and this is why from last year, more funds have been made available to raise salaries for staff in SPED schools. Today, a large majority of students with mild intellectual disability have the potential to attain nationally recognized vocational certification and be placed in open employment with the right kind of support. MOE piloted a, certificate, a certified course on vocational education in 2012 to build staff capability in this area and will be working with SPED schools to put in place vocational education to benefit more students. To improve accessibility to SPED schools, we have increased SPED school capacity and facilitated placement. The Multi-Agency Advisory Panel, or MAAP, comprising specialists from MOE, MOH, and also SPED schools was set up last year, and it has streamlined application processes, and the panel has been useful in bringing together the stakeholders as an initial effort to better understand the complex issues revolving around placement for students with special needs. We are also aiding parents of children with special needs to better understand the needs of their child, and that's why we have published an online guide, a parent's guide to choosing the right school for children with special education needs, and we will publish versions in the mother tongue languages by the end of this year. Beyond providing information, we recognize it can be emotionally hard to cope with news of the diagnosis and to decide what to do next. Hence, last year we prototyped the Post-Diagnosis Education Guidance, or PDEG, initiative. And the prototype was introduced to North Zone schools last year. It will be rolled out to all zones by the end of 2013. These initiatives are part of a whole ecosystem of support for parents. We have therefore also expanded the Parent Support Group, or PSG, fund to SPED schools. Madam, we are also enhancing how we support students with mild special needs who are currently educated in mainstream schools. Students with dyslexia have persistent difficulties in reading, and this creates many downstream challenges for learning. They form the largest group of students with special education needs, and they have a very good chance of overcoming their literacy difficulties if appropriate intervention occurs early. I am pleased to be able to provide an update on our school-based dyslexia remediation program piloted in 20 primary schools last year. Normally, students with dyslexia are referred for remediation by the Dyslexia Association of Singapore, or DAS. These classes are conducted outside school at DAS learning centres. The dyslexia school-based dyslexia remediation program will augment the support for literacy available in our schools. Students with literacy difficulties can receive continuing support within the school starting for Primary 1. In Primary 1 and 2, they are identified for literacy support in the Learning Support, Learning support Program, or LSP. <coughs> Students whose literacy difficulties persist and who are diagnosed with dyslexia then receive dyslexia remediation conducted by the Allied Educator Learning and Behavioral Support and teachers in Primary 3 and 4. The goal is for them to overcome their reading difficulties by the end of Primary 4. Beyond Primary 4, their learning will be monitored and continuing support will be provided by their teachers and the allied educators for those who need it. The school-based dyslexia remediation program has helped those who are weak in spelling and reading. And the key benefits are, first, better engagement of pupils as the curriculum is customized for their learning needs and takes into consideration what is covered in the mainstream English curriculum. And secondly, a more supportive home environment because the reading materials and games provided for use at home together with weekly progress reports have helped parents to play an active role in the intervention process. I have examples to share of students who have benefited from this program. First, Ancha Kil. When he was in primary two, Ancha Kil from Sinmin Primary was only able to name six out of 26 letters of the English alphabet. After a year in the program, Ancha Kil not only picked up reading and spelling skills, but started to love reading and is now reading books to his mother as her bedtime stories. His allied educator, Miss Lim Siu Lian, observes that Ancha Kil has become more confident and vocal. Another student, Guan Ming from Bukit Panjang Primary, has shared that while he could not read in the past, he is now able to do so after undergoing the program. He greatly enjoys the interesting activities in the dyslexia remediation classes conducted by his allied educator, Ms. Fadila. Guan Ming's teachers note that he has become more confident and shows keener interest in his studies. We are glad to see that students have benefited from the school-based dyslexia remediation program, and I am happy to be able to update today that MOE has extended it to another 22 primary schools this year. 
Madam, a number of our students with special needs, both those from mainstream and from SPED schools, will progress to our institutions of higher learning, or IHLs. Mr. Ang Wei Neng and Mr. Nis Pua have asked about support for students with special education needs in the IHLs. We are heartened by the achievements of these students, and we want to provide them with the appropriate support so that they can continue to succeed. There are two key areas that we are focusing on as a start. First, we will provide more systematic transition support. Instead of relying on self-declaration, we have piloted the transfer of relevant diagnosis and support information of students with special education needs from 64 secondary schools to ITE. The transfer was performed with consent from students and parents and was very well received. This year, we have expanded the pilot scheme to include the polytechnics. This allows the IHLs to be able to provide necessary support for students as early as possible, that is, from the point of admission. Second, we are working with the IHLs to build staff capability. There will be a comprehensive training program to equip administrative and faculty staff with the skills to establish a support system and render practical help to students, and we will kickstart the training program this year. Madam, as I have described, we are making significant steps towards strengthening the support for students with special education needs in our institutions of higher learning. And the suggestions of setting up a disability uh, support office given by Ms. Pua as well as Mr. Ang uh, has a lot of merit, and we will consider this uh, in partnership with our stakeholders in the SPED community. Finally, Mr. Ang Weineng has also talked about the admission into IHLs for students with special education needs. Admission into our IHLs, Madam, is merit-based. We consider both the results and other attributes of the applicant holistically. This is not to discriminate against these students, but to determine how best to cater to their learning needs. However, Mr. Ang's point about students meeting uh, or facing certain challenges in interviews or perhaps other aspects of the admission process is a well-taken point. And again, his suggestion has merit, and we will consider how best to support students with special education needs throughout the application as well as the admission process. Madam, through the Our Singapore Conversation process, we are hearing many voices to better support children with special needs. We have also earlier heard many of our stakeholders through the Enabling Master Plan 2012 to 2016. And MOE will continue to work with our partners to embrace and empower people with special needs as full and integral members of the Singapore society. And I'm very happy to end with 10 seconds to spare. I think this is a reasonably fulfilling pace. Thank you very much.